Opening, can I welcome everyone to the fourth meeting of the Education and Skills Committee in 2017? Can I please remind everyone present to turn on mobile phones and other devices onto silent mode? We have received apologies from Tavis Scott. The only item of business today is consideration of a letter from the Scottish Government. The committee had asked for an update from the Government on all live recommendations made by our predecessor committee that are relevant to this committee's remit. That means that we have the opportunity to follow up or keep a watching brief on the issues raised by that committee and provide a continuity of scrutiny. The committee has asked for a copy of the Scottish Government's response. It is worth noting that today is the first occasion since the end of November when the response was received for the committee to give what is a substantial document space on an agenda. I suggest that we touch on each of the Education and Culture Committee's reports that we ask for updates on, and I would particularly welcome input from those who were members of that committee. I have two comments to make, firstly in relation to the National Gaelic Language Plan 2012-17, to pages 1-3 to of the table. Firstly, on the report on educational attainment of looked after children, pages 3-6 to of the table, can I draw members' attention to point 5 on page 5? I understand that the UK Government will limit tax credit claims so that only two children can be included in the claim. There are some exceptions to this, which we announced recently. One of the exceptions relates to kinship care. While there are exceptions for some non-looked-after children in kinship care, there is no exception for formal kinship care of looked-after children. In the context of the UK Government's consultation, the Scottish Government say, quotes, it will be responding to ensure that kinship carers are not disadvantaged in any way, end quotes. I suggest that we write to the Scottish Government to ask what the effects of this change will be on kinship carers in Scotland and whether there will be a policy response from the Scottish Government. Secondly, can I suggest that we add consideration of the Commissioner for Widening Access's annual report into a future work programme. We may, of course, hear from him before his first report is issued, but I want to ensure continuity of scrutiny. Those were my only substantive comments, but there are a number of other important areas of the education and culture's work detailed in the response. Can I ask other members for comment, in particular if there are any areas where they would wish to seek further information, whether from the government, its agencies or stakeholders, or any legislation or other work detailed in the response that they consider could merit further work from this committee in the future. Uh, I'd like to start with the uh, previous members, Liz. Uh, thank you, convener, and uh, I agree with the uh, two comments that you've just made. Um, could I begin with the Gaelic language plan, and thank you to the clerks for providing the update on uh, teacher numbers in there. Um, I, I do actually think this is a central issue about the effective working of the Gaelic plan is to ensure that the, the right number of teachers are available because, uh, as you know, there have been problems uh, in, in teacher training there. So I think it would be quite helpful if we can just keep an eye on that because, although I think there's lots to commend the Gaelic language uh, plan, which we've been very supportive of, but you know, central to that is ensuring that there are enough teachers, um, particularly in the areas that have Indigenous um, uh, Gaelic speakers. Um, so if we can just keep an eye on that, because I think it is um, very important indeed. Um, as you know from the previous committee, and, and indeed actually from the committee prior to that, uh, most of these issues have been uh, very much at the centre of uh, the scrutiny of the committee. And I think it's very good to see that there's going to be ongoing scrutiny of what committees in the past have decided are major issues, the conclusions that they've drawn and scrutiny of these conclusions. Uh, and I also very much welcome the uh, invitation from the Audit Committee to provide um, much more cross-referencing of what's going on there, because I think that's, if, the, if this Parliament has had criticisms, it's because sometimes the scrutiny has not been adequate enough. So I think you know, there, there's some good things happening there. Con, con yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with uh, what you were saying at the beginning there. There's one or two areas here, I think, having been through it with the last committee that I think we should really look at again. Um, one is decisions on taking children into care because I don't think we've really got a grip of that yet. Um, I think we've seen various projects. The committee went to Glasgow and looked at various systems and so on. But I don't think we've really got our hands around it yet. I, don't, I think there's a lot more work to be done there and also attainment for look after, looked after children. Um, again, we had people in about that. We, we spent quite a bit of time on it. But I think there's a lot more work to be done there. I think, I think the, there's a lot of priorities in there that we haven't yet dug into. And I also think uh, we should be focusing on college regionalisation because some aspects of that I haven't really got my head around yet as to how it's working. And we've focused on the individual colleges, but the, the regional structure, I think we need to have a wee look at just to, just to see how it's operating. 
very much. Does, do any other members have any comments to make on this? Uh, Joanne and then Daniel. To follow up on your point about, about the colleges, I was struck, as I mentioned, somewhere of some forum that was set up in 2012 by Mike Russell and it had its second meeting in 2014. I'd just be interested to know if it's ever had a third meeting and what its purpose is. I think the challenge is there's a sense in which people were sceptical why there was regionalisation uh, in the first place, but if it is there, is it adding anything or is it actually just an extra layer? So it'd be interesting that. On the question of looked after children and the convener mentioned the issue of kinship care funding, one of the big issues for kinship care families is the extent to which they are unable to access the resources which a looked after child might be able to resource. I think there's a question in here about, I think the Scottish Government says in terms of social work support for young people in care or looked after young people, they say well, it's a matter for local government to manage its own budgets. I'd be interested to the extent that is actually happening, but is it happening for kinship care children at all? Um, and I think there's a kind of a thread in all of the work around looked after children which relates to kinship care. Because I know one of the, the arguments from campaigning groups would be, for example, it's partly about payments, but young people who may have gone through the same trauma and one's ended up actually being looked after in foster care, one is a kinship care child, they will not have equal access to things like educational psychologists or the kind of extra supports that might be available. So I'm interested in if the support's there at all around the care and to what extent that's actually working its way through. But is there a particular issue around testing it for the access to these services for kinship care children? But I think the college point I'd be very interested in too. Okay, thank you. Daniel, you wanted to come in? It's a supplementary to the college point. I mean, it's, it's mentioned in the paper, uh, and, and, and indeed it's a, an issue that has been touched upon in committees around outcome agreements and how uh, that relationship works and how they, they, they function. And I think it is something that's certainly worth looking at. It, it, that may, of course, be overtaken by events, given what may or may not happen to the Scottish Funding Council. But I think, nonetheless, it's, a, it's certainly a, a, a point that's worth keeping a, a, an eye on and, and giving some thought to. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, any other comments? Ross? Yeah. Just on um, the uh, young people with sensory impairments, the number of qualified teachers point in the report, the government's response to that, I think, some issues with, but I'm hopeful that we'll be able to pick up on that when we look at additional support needs more generally, because the range of specialist staff that you need to cover additional support needs, a young person with autism has obviously got wildly different needs to someone with sensory impairments, and it's something that comes up quite regularly. Love it. Any more? Okay. Well, in that case, can I thank the members for the comments? The Clarts and Spice will ensure these decisions and discussions feed into the committee's work programme. The Clarts will also seek updates on all live recommendations on an annual basis from the government. And at that point, I formally 